Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to cleaning your new Harder and Steenbeck Evolution 2024 CR Plus. Now I clocked a comment on one of the posts and I think it's a newbie that's sort of come across. Dropped a comment saying, how do you clean the new Evolution? So in today's video guys, I'm gonna show you the easiest ways to clean the Evo. If you're doing quick color changes and things like that, or if it's the end of your airbrush session and you wanna give your brush a quick clean, to put back on the shelf ready for your next sort of session of painting. I will also show you how you can strip it down for a deep clean. Now I'd recommend a deep clean on an airbrush, say once a month, strip it down, give it a deep clean, lubricate the parts, I'll show you this in today's video, and then you can keep your brush in tip top condition. Now I'll just run through some of the bits that I use for a deep clean and for just normal cleaning nice simple pieces to get hold of i'd recommend a pot like this or you can use and you'll probably see me do this on the channel when i'm painting i sometimes get a plastic pint pot get a bit of ripped up um, kitchen towel push it into the bottom of the pint pot and then sort of stick that to the easel and i can just blast into there when i'm changing colors or if you've got a cleaning pot these are handy because you can get your brush and you've got somewhere to stand your brush. And these pots, you just blast into these pots. They've got a little filter to the top, so when you blast in, you'll see the air come out this side, and then it catches all your solution in the bottom. You can unscrew the lids, swill the pots through because they're glass, so they're quite good bits of kit to have on the side of your table when you're airbrushing. So that is an option that you can use. Other cleaning products that I use, really simple. Q-tips or cotton buds come in really handy when you airbrush, especially for cleaning as well. Some people say, I don't like using these because when you push these into the cup, you can get the little bits off the cotton bud that go into your brush. I've permanently used these since day dot and I've never had any troubles with bits coming off. I always give it a good blast through with cleaner and water if I've been using these and I always, I always check my paint spray to the side of me on a piece of paper before I commit on my artwork so using these I've had no dramas. Other things nice simple I just chop up pieces of kitchen towel into little squares and use kitchen towel. I'll show you how you use this cleaning the Evo in a minute. Another thing I'd recommend is some eye water super lube or I think this is the only one that they do. I think Badger do one as well. It's like a lubrication that you can put on the airbrush and I'll show you the places where to put it on the Evo to make it run sweet. Another little good gadget to get is they're like dental floss sticks. You get these little plastic sticks with a tiny little pipe cleaner on. These are really good for cleaning the nozzles. If you come to your deep clean, you can use these. Again, I'll show you in a minute how you do that. A paintbrush as well, like a little artist brush. These are really handy for mixing your colors in your cup as well as cleaning at the end of an airbrush session. You'll get to see this. And a little stainless steel or glass pot that you can put some cleaner in if, on your deep cleaning session that you're gonna do. You can drop, and I'll show you, you can drop some of the parts of the airbrush into cleaning solution and you can leave them to soak if you've got any built up paint. So nice and simple bits to pick up, not expensive. Cotton buds are around a pound a box for like 200. So it's really cheap for those. You can get the dental sticks. I've seen these for like eight for a pound and these last really long. So they're good bits of kit to have. Kitchen roll is anything from a pound a roll and I cut it into squares so it lasts a long time. So you just need small little squares like that. Artist brush, really cheap. Hobby stores that you can pick an artist brush up for. Cleaning pots, these vary in places from around 20 pound down to about 10 pound you can get these for. So it's not really gonna break the bank to source the bits to keep your airbrush in tip top condition. So this is the brush that we are gonna be cleaning today. It's the new Evolution CR Plus by Holden and Steenbeck. So I'll move you in a bit closer and we'll run through some cleaning tips. Right guys, you've got your Evo dirty and you need to clean it. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to clean this. If you're cleaning it 
sort of in between colors. The easiest way to clean this brush in between colors is clip your airline in like that. 25 PSI in your brush. Now, if you're painting and you're, you want to change through colors, get some water. You've used your color up and you've got say black, a little bit of black left in your cup. Drop a little bit of water in like that. Get your artist brush and just agitate the paint that's left inside your cup with the artist brush, spin it round at the bottom of the cup like that, and then blast through. Blast all the excess through like that. And just do that a couple of times until you see the cup and down inside the bottom of the cup become clean. You can get a piece of kitchen towel, roll it up like that. Push that inside the cup. I usually just push it in, put my thumb on it and twist like that. And that will clean your cup. That's the sort of fast way I will clean if I'm painting and I'm changing colors. Will be a blast through a water, little bit of kitchen towel, twist, do that a couple of times, a couple more drops of water, blast through, and that's how I'd clean it as I'm painting. And sometimes I'll just do that at the end of a painting session as well, but just make sure you're blasting through clear. So if you finish your painting session and you've got say a red or a yellow or a green that you've used last, just do that quick method with the artist brush and a piece of kitchen towel. And then when you've done that, drop a little bit of more, drop a little bit more water in. And just to make sure that your brush is running clean, spray the water that you've got in your brush against some white kitchen towel. And you'll just see how well your brush is clean because if it's nice and clean, you'll be spraying just clean water like that. If you've got any paint left over, that will start to color up on your kitchen towel. That's just a quick way of checking to see how clean your brush is. So I do that after every paint session. If you keep on top of it like that, that's good enough. It really is on these brushes to clean them and keep them working well. Now, if you were to leave paint in it, say you left a couple of drops of paint inside the cup overnight and it was a little bit congealed inside, you're then going to have to start thinking of stripping it down. Now, these brushes are the easiest to strip down. You've not got to overthink it. It's like Lego. You just clip the bits back together. It's nice and simple. So if I had paint, a little bit of paint in there left overnight, first thing I would do, I would take the back of the body off. Take that, move it to one side. Now there are two ways you can take the needles out of brushes. Some people say you should always take them out to the front. Me personally, I've always pulled them from the back, but you can take these needles out either way on these brushes. It's entirely up to you which way you go about it. I'll show you both ways. So this is the way I'd do it first. I would then undo the chuck at the back and slide my needle out. Right, so you've seen the way I took the needle out the back. If you wanted to take the needle out the front, because a lot of people say you should always take the needle out the front of the brush, the way you would do that on this brush is undo the front, and now you will take the front off. You take the whole front piece off like that, and you can see you've got your needle sticking out the front. Undo the chuck, push the needle forward, slide the needle out the front of the brush. Now, the reason why people say do that is, is because when you pull the needle out the back, you could be dragging paint through the back of the brush. Yes, you can be. Um, I've always took my needles out from the back. That's how I got taught when I started, and I've never had dramas with a brush taking the needle out the back. If you feel comfortable doing it that way and putting the needle out the front, you can do it that way but I've always located the needles and pulled the needles out the back, guys. I've never had any issues in the years that I've been painting 
of taking a needle out the back of a brush. But you can take these needles out either way on these brushes. It's entirely up to you which way you go about it. I'll show you both ways. So this is the way I'd do it first. I would then undo the chuck at the back and slide my needle out. Now your needle will have paint if you've left any paint in your cup. What you've got to imagine is where that paint would run down, it would be sitting sort of here in that body. So you'll have paint at the front end of this needle. So the easiest way to clean the needle, get a piece of your kitchen towel, fold it in half like that, drop a little bit of cleaner onto your kitchen towel, place your needle on top and pinch like that. So you're pinching the kitchen towel with the needle and then just twist the needle and pull through like that. Just pull it away from you like that. Be careful with these because they are very sharp and you can quite easily stab yourself with these. So just pinch and pull and twist at the same time and that will remove your paint from your needle onto that kitchen towel. So that's your needle nice and clean, nice and simple. Put that to one side, be very careful not to drop it because you can damage the fronts of these needles. So put that to one side. So you're left with your brush looking like this. The needle's out the back, the rear part of the body's out the way. You can now move on to the front end. You can take the prong cap off, that just slides off like that. And then the next part of the body, this piece here, you'll feel the thread on this. When you rub your fingers to the front of the brush, you'll feel that thread. Pinch, undo this, that just screws and comes away from the body. And then when you turn around and look at that, you'll see that little white O-ring on the top. That's the nozzle inside of the front of the body here. This piece slides away and that's where your floating nozzle is. So you can take that away. That's the front end of the brush disassembled in them three pieces. So now you're left with the brush like that. The next part you can take off is the cup. That just unscrews, finger tight. And that's your brush broke down for cleaning. Now, the things that you can clean and the things that you can soak with these brushes, get yourself your little stainless steel pot or glass pot, airbrush cleaner or thinners. Now, you can soak the cup. If you've got any built up paint, you can drop that in cleaner. Your prong cap, if you've been painting for a long time and you've been blasting thick paints through and thin paints, and it's been a bit splattery for you because you've not got your paint consistency right, you'll probably get a little bit of build up on the insides of these prongs. So that can go in your cleaner. You can leave it to soak. Your nozzle, the one that's got the white washer on, that can go in soak as well. So you can leave them in soak. 10, 15 minutes, just soaking in a strong cleaner. Let the cleaner do the work and break that, the body of that dried up paint down. Move that to one side. We're gonna move back onto this front piece here. This is the one that's got the little black washer on. Now to the front of this, this is where your needle would come out of that little hole there. Sometimes you can get a little bit of buildup of paint on that hole there at the front. Get a cotton bud, nice and simple, just dab it into the cleaner and just wipe the front of that hole at the front of that nozzle, like that. Just give that a wipe, hold it up to the light and look at the hole. If you can see through and see bright light shining at you through the little hole, you know that's nice and clean. I sometimes wipe this and then just blow Hold it up to the light and just make sure you can see clearly through that little hole at the front and that's the front part of the brush, nice and clean. It's very rare you get any build up inside this. This is usually always clean because this is where the air is coming down. So that should be clean inside there. It's very rare you get paint. I've never had paint on the inside of this piece. It's usually on the tip of that you'll get a little bit of dried up paint. So that's the front bit clean. 
then you're left with the brush like this. So you can now see in front of the brush here and you can see down into the body here. Now if you've got a little bit of paint in here, get your cotton bud with a bit of cleaner again, push the cotton bud in and give that a little spin and a little white round. Wipe all the threads here, round here, keep them nice and clean. And then to the front here, the cotton bud will only go so far in. You can only push it so far in because you've got a solid part of body in there where that little hole is there. Just put the cotton bud in and just give that a little white round there. So if you've got any paint build up in there, just give it a clean. That's the front of your brush, clean. That's the, the furthest I would go on a breakdown of cleaning your brush to this side. It's very rare you're gonna get build up of paint coming back. The only times you'll get build up of paint coming back here is if you're leaving your brush overnight and you're leaving it like this on the table with paint in it, you need to leave your brushes. If you've got one of the cleaning pots, as you can see, then cleaning pots, when you put your brush in, they angle forward like that. So they face forward. Always keep your brushes facing forward in the airbrush hanger so they tilt forward down and that keeps any paint towards the front end. You must always keep paint running and flowing to the front. If you start tilting your brushes back and leaving them back like this, that paint's gonna run down that needle and it's gonna sit and want to go back inside the body. And that's sometimes where it can run down inside there over time. And then you'll start getting problems when you press down on your trigger because you'll have paint build up that's gone back into the brush and it just starts to make the pin, the air pin, sticky. So when you press down, it sticks and then your trigger stays on and then slowly comes up. If you do get problems like that, this is a way of cleaning it. You take the back of the brush off, like that, and then these triggers slide out. Now the piece that you would be looking at is inside here. If you were to get paint that ran back in the brush, it's very unlikely, but if you do, get a cotton bud with a mild airbrush cleaner. No solvents around this bit, guys. Nice mild airbrush cleaner. Pop your cotton bud inside here and just twist and clean down on where that pin is. You'll clean like that, and when you pull away, you'll probably get a little bit of paint build up that just sits down inside there where the air pin is below. So just put your cotton bud down, little twist, take your cotton bud out, and then your pin, your air valve pin will be moving again. So that's as far as I'd go. That's a complete strip down. It is very unlikely you will have to do this. If you just follow them rules of keeping your brush pointing forwards in your airbrush hanger, that's why all airbrush hangers are sort of designed to be pointing down and forwards. I do recommend the Harder and Steenbeck airbrush hanger. If you're after a good one, they do these ones. I'll leave a link in the description. These airbrush hangers are really good. And these are designed by H&S, so your brushes sit nice and snug in the top. It's a great little hanger. It's got rubber feet on it so it grips your table. And the brushes sit in there really nice. So that's the one I'd recommend for the brush if you're working on a tabletop. Brilliant little hangers. So you've been soaking your bits like that in the cleaner. You can leave them in there for a little bit longer. What I'll do is I'll show you where you can put the lubrication on the brush. So grab a little bit of your lubrication like that to the back part of this you can see that little twisty thread when you turn that you can see that there you can drop a little bit of the eye water lube on them little threads just going around there like that and what that will do is when you're moving your trigger and your brush your the mechanism on this brush is doing this when your trigger's moving backwards, this is doing this. So 
a little bit of lubrication on here keeps that piece silky smooth. So a little bit there, you can drop that back on the body. So that just screws in right there and just screw that until it stops. Finger tight guys, nice and simple, just nip that to there. And then to put your trigger back in, before you put your trigger back in, you can put another bit of lubrication. This bar slides up and down on that trigger assembly there. So a little bit of lubrication on that piece there, on that little channel. Same on the other side, and that makes that nice and silky smooth, like that. To put your trigger in, pinch the chuck at the back, pull and pinch your fingers together, so you'll feel the tension in the spring as you pull it back. Get your trigger and put the trigger in so the gold half moon bar sits to the back of the brush. That will just drop in let go of you, the back piece and that's your trigger in. Nice and simple. So you pinch there, pull back, just do that again for you at the side view, pinch and pull, take your trigger out, push your trigger in, let go of the back and that's your trigger in. Very simple. And this is why I say these brushes are like Lego. Once you strip one down once, it's like riding a bike guys, you never forget with these brushes, you can do, I've done this on a, it's on the channel, I did a blindfolded challenge on a Infinity, and I blindfold myself and I'll show you how you strip the Infinity down blindfolded and put it back together. That's how easy I've always said these brushes are. So that's where you put your lubrication on that bit of trigger there, on the back, and that makes that piece silky smooth. Putting it back together, you're basically doing the reverse. So clean the bits that have been in soap, just give them a little wipe over with a kitchen towel. So that's your cup. Drop your cup back on. Finger tight, just a little twist. Your prong cap, now it's had a good soap, just give that a little wipe on the inners of the prongs. That's that bit. When it comes to your floating nozzle, the one that's got the white washer on the end, get your little pipe cleaner. If you, this is if you've got a build up of paint. Get your pipe cleaner and just put that inside the nozzle and just give it a little agitate round and this will remove any paint that's on the inside of that nozzle. Couple of dips in the cleaner, wipe that through like that. So that's how you clean your nozzle. Just wipe the Teflon washer, make sure that's all nice and clean, like that. Get the front piece, the one that's got the black washer on, and then slide that one into it. That just locates down like that. And then that piece screws back on the front of the brush and just nip that up with your fingers, like that. Get your crown cap, drop your crown cap back on. Now what I usually always do as well is get your needle. I usually do a little drop in the middle of the needle. So you've got a little drop of the super lube there. Pinch and just wipe that on the needle from the back to about halfway down, like that. And then locate your needle in. Slide your needle to the front. When you feel it stop, don't push on the needle. You just feel it stop and locate. I usually get that finger, put my finger on the back to stop the needle moving. Finger on the chuck there and my thumb, and then just tighten the chuck up nip the chuck up like that and that's your brush back together. Get the back piece of the body, drop that back on and that's your Evo done.
nice and simple guys it really is and that's why i've always banged on about h&s on how easy they are to get on with this is what i mean by a brush they're just very nice to paint with they're very easy to strip down and maintain that's the only bit of maintain maintenance you need i've gone through a deep clean with you you don't need to do that excessive strip down with these brushes every day of the week you really don't as long as you keep this piece of the front end of the body nice and clean using one of these probably the best tool to use just a bit of water or cleaner clean through there blast through just keep it nice and clean it will last you a lifetime it really will so i hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something along the way enjoy your harder and steam back evolution cr plus 2024 and i'll see you in the next one guys thanks for watching